Hello again and welcome back. I'm Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and I want to share another of my painting experiments with you today. So I um, have not done so so well in the past with dirty pours where I put everything in a single cup and either flip it or pour it out onto my canvas. I've never really been able to create something really great that I've loved just yet. So I'm going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to add all of the colours to the canvas separately and then try to flow them together and see if I can create something that looks nice without, it, without too much mixing. So what I've started off with is my economy colours. I've got these large economy paints and I've mixed up four colours, a green, red, yellow and orange. My standard mix for all of these paints is pretty much the same. I use one tablespoon of the colour, then a half a tablespoon of this Floetrol paint additive and then around a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of water if needed in order to hopefully get the right consistency for the paint to flow without it being too watery. But that's, I'm still experimenting with that just just yet. I don't feel I've got the, the mix exactly right. So my paints are a little thicker today and we'll see how that, how that works out. I also add another additive into my paints and that's the silicon spray. You can also use a silicon oil and what I do is I spray this off into a little jar and I use a dropping tool, just one of these little plastic droppers and then I can add two or three drops into each of my colours. So I've got four colours and I've also got white in a squeezy bottle because I use white a lot so I always keep this one pre-mixed. So I found an old canvas which has had a lot of practice and uh, failure on it in the past so fingers crossed it's not going to be another failure for this canvas today but we'll have to see. So I've set it up on, a, on a, a few plastic cups there just to keep it off the board and used my little levels to make sure that everything is straight because what I have had in the past is when I've created something that I like if I haven't got it exactly level you come back half an hour later and the paint is gradually all slid off the one side so it is important to get yourself some little levels or something like this to check that your canvas is straight and level in both directions. So I'm just going to give my paints a final stir and then I'm going to start with the colours. So what I've decided to do is create um, a puddle in the middle and a puddle in each of the four corners. So I'm going to start with white, add a little spot and then as I add the extra colours these spots should spread out a little bit. These little pots aren't the easiest to pour from because they've got a lip but I do like that I can store any unused paint in them so I'm going to stick with them for now until I can find something that's going to work equally as well. Okay so that hasn't already gone great as you can see because the orange has bled directly into that white so that was a bit odd. It may be that one of them, I probably the white is too runny I'm going to keep going and we'll see what happens. I know that orange is always a little bit temperamental anyway and it takes over everything. It's very light in terms of its weight and so it always does seem to take over any colours that you add it to. Even if I only added 10% orange my uh, painting would come out 90% orange or so it seems at the end. So let's add a bit more white. I'm also now going to start filling in some of these other areas because I don't want to have to move the paint about too much. Green. Yeah, that lip on the edge of the pot isn't make it, making it very easy to pour out a small amount. Because I pour a small amount, it gets stuck on the lip and then it just runs down the side of the pot. So that's not ideal. Maybe if I want a small amount, I should try applying it with a spoon or something. Let me see what I can do about that. 
So I can, I think I can make it work a little bit better if I just use the this edge of my stick just to drop a little bit off into the puddle and then I haven't got a pour and it doesn't seem to be quite so messy. So let's keep going. I'm going to start adding them in bigger patches now. So I don't think we've had any of the red yet, did we? I can't remember. If we did, it's covered up. So let's go with a bit of red. And in slightly big blo bigger blobs this time. Looking good. Some more white. Oh, I missed a spot there. Missed my red. Go back. Add a little spot in there. white. Dare I use a bit more orange? I probably will. I'm just going to put a little bit because I know it goes crazy and takes over. So again this white isn't um, staying separate to the other colours. I think because it's a little, um, a little thinner, more runny. It's not staying very separate to the others, but we'll see what happens when we spread the paint about later. It may still work out nicely. Let's go with a bit more yellow now, shall we? So I'm feeling that I'm probably getting to the point now where I've got enough paint. So I need to think about what colours I want to be on the top, whether I'm happy with the look that I've already got. Just a little bit more white because I feel that that is disappearing. The green is quite bright and overpowering so I don't think I need any more of that. So I think I'm ready to give it a pour and see what happens. So fingers crossed and wish me luck. I've already got a little bit dripping off the sides into some very very nice looking puddles. So let's see what happens. Wow, crazy. Look at those crazy colours. It's got this final side to do. There's a couple of little bits where it doesn't seem to want to flow very well. Let's get them right off those edges. Okay, so I've got my... Oh, now there's a little bit there in the corner. I'm just going to tap that with my finger. That's good. So I'm going to wash my hands a moment and just leave that to settle and see what happens. So it looks pretty damn psychedelic. I love this orange and green together. It looks really, really good. Uh, I like the way I've got some darker areas and a lighter area here with a little bit more white. But interesting, the amount of white I poured on there um, I really don't see very much of it at all. We know that white is a heavier colour and I think it really does sink through a lot of these other colours that I'm using. So I also don't have much in the way of any cell action. I've left it a few minutes and not much is going on. I've got lots and lots of little tiny ones and just a few um, larger ones but there's not much interest there in terms of all of the, the cells popping through and I think that's the difference when you put the colours on like this and flow them around they don't mix the same as you would do when you pour them from height into a cup or when you do um, a dirty pour um, and a flip cup and so on so um, I am going to give this a little torching and see if I can bring out a little bit more there's a few little bits and pieces developing but I think while it's still wet, I'm going to give it a once over and we'll see what happens. Stand well back, it's the fiercest torch in the West. Okay, 
So that's brought the white back out. That always seems to be the case when I do torch that I tend to bring the, the white through. And again, a tiny, tiny little cells. Now that I've started, I may as well go ahead and do the lot, I think, because it's gonna look funny if I just leave that patch in the middle. So I'll go and do the whole surface now. Okay, so there's a lot more interest to it now. There's a lot more uh, the lacing, the white coming through. There's a lot more movement to it. But um, I'm also getting a few of the, the larger cells come through now. Almost like the white now, for some reason when it's heated, comes more to the surface. Which is really odd because it's not really what I see from other people's work. Uh, when I see them torch, I don't see that their cells come through as white. I see them see that their cells come through as coloured. So it's interesting that I seem to have a difference and I wonder if that's just the different brand of paints that I've got. The white that I'm using is the same brand as the, the colours. So um, it's a bit of a mystery to me why my cells seem to be white and other people's cells seem to be coloured. But nonetheless, it's an interesting effect. Um, I'm happy with how this looks. It's really bright and colourful and um, looks almost Caribbean a little bit with the, the green and yellow and orange there. So I think I'll zoom in now for some close-up shots and then share pictures with you at the end of what it looks like when it's finished. So here's some really nice cells up in this corner. I like the way there's this little ribbon of red weaving through. That looks really nice. And the same here. This red, it looks like a, a river flowing through the painting. That's really nice. And again you can see all the, um, the cells come through in a very white, uh, especially around this area here. You see it's gone very light here. It's really interesting to me. Over on this side, again you can see on the, the darker colours, on the orange and so on, and on the green, that the cells come through white from the layers underneath. And the yellow here Interestingly, didn't seem to do very much at all. The yellow was pretty unaffected. There's a little bit of white showing through, but um, not very much. Right, let's zoom all the way back out. And there's a final look while it's wet. And I'll come back again and show you when it's dry. So here's the end result. This is what the picture looks like when it's dried and finished. Didn't have a lot of changes to it. It's also got a nice glossy finish. I've given it a coat, uh, several coats of the varnish now, so it looks really nice. Um, and the colours are definitely very tropical and Caribbean. They look quite um, zesty, in fact. We've got like orange, lemon and lime in there. So um, I think it's turned out really nice and I'm happy with it in the end. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope if you've enjoyed watching some of my videos, you'll subscribe to my channel. I'm really hoping to get to 100 subscribers so that I can pick my own channel name. I hope to do that soon. Thanks for watching.